Hello my dear YouTuber friends, I hope you're all keeping well. Happy New Year to everybody, it's the first opportunity I've had to say that this year in a video. So happy 2021. In this video I've got something rather exciting to set up. It's a Logitech multi-panel, something I've been after for a while and eventually I've managed to get my hands on it. It's to complement the Logitech Flight Yolk system. So I'm going to unbox this, set it up, get it working with Flight Simulator 2020 and let's see what we're going to see. Now before I get this set up on my system and with Flight Simulator 2020, I want to show you the packaging. Compared to the Logitech Flight Unit or Flight Yoke system, the packaging on this is a step up definitely. You've got this protective layer protecting the main unit and look at that. For those of you who don't know, the Flight Multi-Panel basically has a trim wheel, which is something I really wanted. Didn't feel good enough to trim the plane. It's one of my favourite things to do in my aircraft. I'm always trimming, as you know from my videos. I wanted a trim wheel. This has got some resistance to it. And it actually feels great to use. I can't wait to get this set up and used or in it, get it set up and actually start using it. Really nice resistance on that. It really feels fantastic. Not too much resistance. It's just enough to make it feel realistic. The flaps lever I wasn't too bothered about. I may still use a button, a rocker switch on my flight yacht unit. I may use this. I've not decided yet. Feels okay, feels a bit flimsy, not as nice as that trim wheel. That feels really good. This auto throttle switch feels metal, feels heavy duty. Nice, satisfying clunk. I could use that for auto throttle, I could use it for something else, even possibly, here's an idea, even landing gear. Landing gear up, landing gear down. Maybe, I'll have to see when I set it up. This I'm looking forward to use. This will light up with an LED display. It's your autopilot console. And that switch, sorry, got my hand in the way there, but feels really nice. Lots of resistance there. Feels professional, like the real thing you would imagine. Lots of buttons. I'm really looking forward to getting this set up as well. But specifically that trim wheel. Really looking forward to that. Anyway, just thought I'll show you this part of the video. Just the packaging is really, really nice. Really solid, good, professional packaging. Let's get on with setting this up. Now, one thing I've noticed when I'm trying to set this up, I'm trying to get it fitted on top of my flight yoke system. So my existing flight yoke system. Basically, it comes with a front panel. Now, if you have your own dedicated flight simulator setup, you can just use this front part here and then just screw that into a, a mounting that you have an existing mount. It does come with a plastic. It's a shame it's only plastic, but they had to keep the cost down a bit, I imagine. Uh, it's also mounting brackets. I've actually screwed four screws into that in each corner onto the mountain bracket and this mountain bracket would then attach to your flight yacht system. Now you may not realize I didn't until I started to watch a video on YouTube. It's actually by a, a guy called Delta 249er and he was showing me that you actually had to unscrew a couple of screws on your Logitech flight yacht system or your Sightech uh, flight yacht system. 
I, it's possibly the same with that system too. The screws are already screwed into these holes. You have to remove a couple because you do get a couple of extra screws included in this package to mount this onto on top of this. So I'm just about to, to, to do that. So it's just in case you didn't realize there's actually screws already screwed in there. And unfortunately you need an Allen key. Thankfully my friend had a sort of a pen knife Allen key set. And it's that one I've got out there that fits in those Allen key slots perfectly. You have to use one of those or an Allen key of this size, I'm not sure what size it is, to actually unscrew the screws so I can mount this onto that. So I'll keep going. I just thought that I would show you that part in case you were having difficulty mounting it yourself. It does come, by the way, with a couple of uh, 3M sort of uh, vel Velcro double-sided sticky sort of Velcro tabs. It didn't keep it stable enough, so I want to actually mount it physically on top of that so it doesn't move. Uh, but if you wanted to mount that somewhere else, it does come with these uh, Velcro double-sided sticky pads. Wouldn't really recommend it. I recommend you uh, hard mount it. Okay, let me continue. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so with the multi-panel firmly fitted, by the way, I ended up removing, if you can imagine these screws at the bottom here, it's parallel. So there's two screws at the bottom of the flight yacht unit. I ended up removing two parallel to these two rather than the center because the USB for this device comes right out in the middle here and it's difficult to actually tighten the screws and it actually feels firmer with these two. I suppose technically you could use the screws that came out of the flight yacht system to screw this in but I just used the screws that were supplied with this and two of them seem fine. It's actually firm enough on that system. So with that done you want to head over to the Logitech website. I'll link this below to you and on this the flight multi-panel you want to go down to support and then it will show you go to downloads and actually go to show all downloads and basically you want to install there's a patch for Microsoft Flight Simulator which is what we'll be using with this system if you scroll down actually choose your operating system and then it shows you a lot more uh, drivers. There's actually one, let's see if I can get to it, Flight Panel Test Software. And what this does, if I run it, you'll see that your multi-panel becomes alive. And if, you, if I move the trim, trim switch up and down, it will correspond to what is shown on the screen. So if you move it up, it's going to show that on the screen. If you move it down, it'll show the same. If you flick the auto throttle switch, so let's do this, you will see that move on screen as well. Same with the flaps. And if you press buttons, I expect I'll move this switch. It will correspond with what you're doing there physically to what it's showing on the screen and obviously it's just doing a sort of lamp test of all the different buttons so so far so good i did find that the lead to this is long enough that it stretches to the very back of my pc and i had to plug this into a usb 3 on my system for this to work it wouldn't work in a usb 2 it may be different for different people. By the way, run that test sort of software, test that all the buttons work and they do. As I move it, it shows it on screen. Check that all your lights light up and that your panel works as well. I believe this is to alter the autopilot settings. It's not a dimmer switch as I thought it would be. This would alter, so if you're setting your alt, for example, in-game. I'll show you that once we get into game anyway. But check it all works. 
Now let's head over finally to Flight Simulator 2020 and see if this works. So here we are, I've loaded up Flight Simulator 2020. Obviously I'm in the Cessna in my test base, so it's London City Airport. If you watch my other videos, you'll understand that I always use this as my test base. I've moved my view to the left. Now I'll just push down on the flaps, point the camera to the screen so you can see what's happening. Now apologies for doing this, I'm going to have to fly one-handed. I tried to set the camera up on a tripod, or the phone up on a tripod. Couldn't really see what I was doing, it was difficult to get the correct position. So I'll just have to do it one-handed. But that's fine. As you can see the flap switch works. This all works. And you'll be saying, well that's how it should, how do you set it up? Well, that's the trick. As long as you've downloaded the correct drivers. Previously I showed you how to download the patch for Flight Simulator 2020. You have to scroll down that download. I'll put a, a link a video in this video so you can see what I mean. Scroll down and select the correct patch for the multi-panel. The main patch for the multi-panel to, to work in Flight Simulator 2020. Once you've done that and installed it, if I go to my settings a moment and go to controls, you will see here there's no setting for the multi-panel. You've got keyboard, mouse, flight yoke system and track IR, as for my DLAN clip, but nothing for the multi-panel. That's because this works out of the box as long as you just install those drivers. It works in Flight Simulator 2020 out of the box. You don't need to mess around with settings. And I'm going to prove that to you. So that's the flaps. We know that works. Let's throttle up. Release the parking brake. So I'll just simply obviously take off. Once it gets the correct takeoff speed, that should be okay. Now I've got no flaps at the moment, but what I'm going to do is use a trim switch to start trimming up. So I'm going to I'm moving the wheel down to trim the aircraft up. And hey presto, it works. It takes a little bit of getting used to that trim wheel. I use the rocker switch on the yoke unit. And going from that to the trim wheel takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to move the wheel a bit more for it to take effect, basically. But it's more accurate. And obviously it just feels more realistic. But now say I wanted to set an altitude. I'll move my selector to altitude, so the very last one. Set that to, let's say, 700. Press autopilot and press the alt button. Hey presto, the aircraft will now settle at 700 feet for you. I've got a wind layer there, let's just delete that. I'll link my video about wind layers. Oops, don't need to do that, I need to go here. Let's just get rid of that wind layer because I don't like it. And delete layer, thank you. Very unrealistic wind layer on a calm day. So there you go, anyway, the also pilot works there. Say I wanted to set a setting, I'm at 228 at the moment, I'll go setting, heading of 300. Move your selector down, or switch it to heading rather. Uh, it should be heading. There we go, heading. So let's switch that, let's change that heading, what did I say, 300? So I'll just move that to 300. Using the switch here, left or right sort of a uh, knob rather. Select 300. 300, that'll do, oh come on. And then click heading. Look what's happening. We're flying at 700 feet. And now the aircraft is actually moving to a heading of 300 degrees. And while that's happening, I could alter that. I 
could say I want, well actually that's pretty good because now we're flying, I want it slightly more, let's say 305. Because also pilot's on, the aircraft's going to correspond to your instructions. This is just in the default settings. You've obviously got vertical speed and other settings here that you can set that will be useful in other aircraft, especially the airliners and aircraft like that. But that is brilliant. It adds to the simulator, it adds, adds to the fun of Flight Simulator 2020 and because it works out of the box you don't have to mess around with those dreaded settings of Flight Simulator 2020. I actually like the settings but they can be complex. As long as you download the drivers it should work automatically for you which is fantastic. Something I didn't mention. I got it from Amazon for £79.99, so £80 effectively. I asked Amazon to notify me when they had this in stock. I got a notification on the 22nd or 23rd of December. I just grabbed it straight away. For 80 quid, if you have the Logitech Flight Yolk system or a Flight Yolk, whatever Flight Yolk or joystick, this just adds a whole new level of immersion for me. I especially love the trim wheel, but I'm actually possibly liking as much this autopilot feature. I want to turn now. I'm going to set the autopilot to turn me to the left. Look at that, it just does it. Move it up to altitude. I want to go oh, slightly higher. Move the knob to the right. Oh, 800 to do. It will take me up, <laughs> increase my altitude rather, and put me on the right heading. The heading I want to turn back again now, just to give you an example and the versatility of this. And it's just going to turn you, it's fantastic. Of course you, want to, you don't want to fly with autopilot anymore, turn it off, you are flying manually, straight away, no messing around. So there you go. That's my quick first impressions and review of the multi flight multi-panel, Logitech flight multi-panel. Let me know your own thoughts. Do you have this yourself? Are you enjoying it? I'm loving it personally. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more, especially Flight Simulator 2020 content and Flight Simulator content in general. And I'll see you soon.